So today, the title of the message is going to be, Who is this spirit called Lesion? So I'm going to, we're going to walk the word today. I have so much revelation to share with you. I'm going to be concluding this actual uh, series because it's just time to move on to something else. But I wanted to go back and recap and just pull the meat out to make sure that you got it. Those of you that have sisters in the spirit, text them and make sure that they're up. Tell them deliverance is nigh. If you love them and you want them free, tell them deliverance is nigh. They should get up and hear this word of the Lord. There are times that you must seek God in in a way that you've never sought him before. Sometimes you have to break through. You got to do something you've never done before. You got to kill that flesh and get up in the morning. Oh, my God, but I hear that there are people that have been crying out for years about their health, their weight, their mind, their spirits. They're trying to figure out what is it. Today, God's going to give you revelation, and the pieces are going to come together. It's going to be as if someone has a pie. They have cut pieces, and those pieces of that pie is getting ready to start coming together because revelation is coming to you today. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, or you're a pastor or not. The Lord wants to heal your soul You can get married, you can get divorced, you can be sick, you can be in wealth. It does not matter. Everybody needs healing of the soul. Everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. It is a constant healing of the soul that is needed. I'm sorry to bust the bubble of some of you all that feels as though... You know, there's a one-time deliverance to something. The Lord wants your soul healed. I'm going to give you the key to the message. Before, I'm going to give you the ending of the message, which is going to be a great key for you. And I want you to hold on to it because I want you to remember that the Lord wants your soul healed. And the scripture that's going to be the one that you're going to hold on to is Second Chronicles 7 and 14. And it says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. When your sins are forgiven, your soul is healed. See, when you repent and you cry out, oh, Monday to the most See, when you really cry out, God begins to break up that soul stuff. See, some of you are saying, the prophetess, I don't understand. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I became born again. I became filled with the Holy Spirit. I speak in tongues, and I love God. Why is my soul still sick? Because There are things. Now, you have to understand, yes, you've got salvation. Yes, you're filled with this Holy Spirit. Your spirit, man. Remember, if you can remember back when they talked so much about body, spirit, and soul. Well, see, your spirit is is now born again. Chris, brand new, washed, clean. Your spirit is filled with Jesus now. Absolutely. There's no question as to whether or not you're not, you know, you don't have God in you. But your soul is sick. 
Because there is residue. See, but one of the next steps after being healed and speaking in tongues would be to go to an area of inner healing, which I call deliverance. Because our lives is filled with so much stuff. And after your spirit gets filled, see, God did not leave us just alone. He didn't. He left a word for us. He left power for us. Why do you think he said, and I will give thee power? What do you think the power was for? Why do you think he gave us dunamis power? It's to blast that stuff out. There's stuff in there that has to get out. And you're going to do it with the power of the Holy Spirit and the comfort of the Father. So it is that. And then he says, and I will heal their land. When, see, see, once your soul gets healed, your mind gets healed. Then your land starts to get healed. So let's get ready to walk through the word today. Who is this spirit called lesion? My goodness. The, we just going to tell the Holy Spirit we need you today to minister. You know, today God is calling you to break through. He says he wants you free today. He does not want you tormented in your mind, ooh, perplexed in your spirit. Nothing but God should be in your spirit. No more torment. No more hidden torment. He wants you to get dressed, leave out your house, get on your job with your supervisors and, and leaders and things of that nature. The torment becomes hidden. Nobody knows about that torment. But Jesus has given us the green light today to go after that demon spirit, and it's called lesion. For they, for we are many. That means multiple, multiple groups, up to three to 6,000. You might think, where in the world could that come from? Oh, of course, that's not me. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, what is that thing that makes you have a bad attitude? What is that thing that makes you get so angry you almost want to kill somebody? What is that thing that makes you can't forgive? What is that thing that makes you so bitter? You're so negative. You're negative even to your own self. You word curse your own self. But today, no more torment. No more torment in your body, soul, finances, marriage, relationships, your mind, your heart. No more torment. No more today. We expose that spirit today. It stops today. Why don't you say that to yourself? It stops today. Yeah, put your, take your finger and, and tap it on your chest and say, today, it stops. Shake yourself. And say, today it stops. Accepting all of these pain and body issues and things. Your soul is sick. Chronic pain. Your soul is sick. There's some unforgiveness in there and you're hurting and it's taking over. It's time to walk in, in the spirit like you've never walked before. Today can be a change for you. Do you hear me? Today can be a change. It's time to walk in the spirit. The pieces are coming together, healing. This morning, get ready to grow. Let's talk about maturity in the spirit. Right now, there's the only people that are being promoted in the spirit is those that are mature. So if you are whiny, you are a negative person, I don't, you know, I, you know, I don't believe all that immature, immature. And the only people that are being promoted is them that are mature in the spirit. Otherwise, you're just going through cycles, pleasing your flesh and compromising, throwing down the towel and just accepting anything coming, making excuses, lying to yourself. Ah, Rabbi Sheh. Telling yourself, well, everybody goes through something. Everybody's going through something. 
Everybody's not going through something. You're going through something because your soul is sick. But today, oh, yeah, healing comes to you today. Nahande o rabashe. Without maturity, you remain the same. There's no growth. None. None. No growth. You'll find yourself talking to your friend girl or talking to your to, to the guys at work and you're saying the same thing. No change. No change. Why does that demon keep coming back? Why can he come back? Why every six months that torment come back? Why can someone come on your job with some familiar spirit and you're paranoid and next thing you find yourself tripping up? What is an agreement? There's an agreement there. But today we're going to get rid of attachments. There will be no attachments in your soul. It will, if there are attachments, there will be no change. And this is what the enemy does. He makes you so frustrated that you actually give up. And you say, you know what? I've tried this enough. It's not working. Okay, it's not working. It's not going away. Remove the attachment. You must move the There are spiritual attachments that bond you to people, to things. And people house spirit. Everybody's not at a level of deliverance. Everybody's not an area of even seeking deliverance or trying to move to another place. Some people don't even believe in deliverance. They don't even believe in demons. But when they do crazy stuff and their mind looks flipped out and they got these strange outbursts, they're looking at the other people. They're putting it on them. But God wants you healed in your mind today. It's not normal. And those of you that live and or work with people that you know have these type of spirits in them, know this. They are tormented. They're tormented. I understand you said... The prophet is you don't understand, you know, they are tormented by the spirit of lesion. There's so many demons in them. They're starting to get out of control, and now they just outburst and, and, and just saying whatever they feel and doing whatever they feel because lesion is moving. God has a plan for you, and it's time to start seeking what is that plan. My question to you today is, do you have lesion in you? Do you have any characteristics? And maybe you don't. Maybe you will have no type of of agreement or anything that I might say today. You may have no agreement to it. You may not have no type of affiliation. You might say, well, I've never experienced that, or that's not quite me. Then praise God. I praise God for you. But my question is, do you have lesion in you? Demon spirits bring torment, unbelievable mind battle, make your mind just constantly war. Oh, many people are tormented. They are. And when a person is tormented, they can only go so long before they just blow up or do something crazy, or make a wrong decision, and, and, and you will be like, like, what is the deal? Oh, Rabashi. You might say, well, what is this? What is this thing called lesion? Lesion brings torment to your thoughts, to your health, chronic strange things, Skin diseases, you're trying to figure out what's going on. Chronic yeast infections, chronic things constantly coming up. Lesion has many ways of manifesting, and we're going to talk about them today. But let me just walk through the scriptures just for a moment. Why don't you join me? It will be Luke 8 and 26. Now, we will walk through maybe through the 30th or 39th verse. Let's just see where the Lord brings us. But I'm going to give you revelation from each part of them that may apply to your life. I love to walk through the word. When you walk through the word with application, it's amazing. It's because you put yourself in the word. 
So it reads in the 26th verse, and then it says, And then they said, they sailed to the country of the Gananias, which is opposite, actually, from Galilee. Now, this is the English Standard Version that I'm reading from today. When Jesus had stepped out on the land, on the land, there were, there was with, met a man from the city who had a demon. For a long time, he had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house but among the tombs. Now, you know, we know a tomb is a graveyard. My goodness, no clothes and living among the tombs. What is our spiritual tomb? What is our spiritual graveyard? Those are our memories of our mistakes, our wounds, the things people did us. You know, the ones that right in the midst of your wonderful season, all of a sudden that old memory comes back. You rehearse them, and then the same pain comes back. My God, wow. Are you living among the tombs? Which graveyard are you living in? It's the one that you constantly rehearse. The 28th verse, it says, And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell before him and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. Demons recognize authority. Demons recognize when they're getting ready to be cast out. He, in turn, demons begin to say, you're tormenting them. Whenever a demon spirit is is attacking you, it's going to flip it on you. When people are walking in demonic spirit, they can't see that they're demonized. They can't see that they're tormented. Everybody can see it but them. They don't realize they're talking crazy. They don't realize everybody's shoo-shooing and going, what is wrong with her? Do you realize what she said? The words she said don't even make sense. They don't, they don't see it. He didn't recognize that he didn't have no clothes on. He lived in a, in a graveyard. So he cries out really loud. And then he's saying Jesus is tormenting them. This is how demons manifest. And you may know a person like this. They have no clue. In their mind, until deliverance comes, it's everybody else's fault. But know this, demons recognize authority. And those of you that deal with people on your job, don't let them ruin your character. See, I look at it this way. There's just some people I don't choose to be in my inner circle, my outer circle, or in my life or or crossing paths with me. Because there's some spirits are obvious. It's obvious they have other gods. Obvious that they're actually uh, serving other gods, and, and they're manifesting in their lives. The 29th verse says, For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many, for many a time it, it had seized him. And he was kept under guard, bound by chains. My God. Do you know demons don't realize how strong they are? They hurt people and don't know it. Demons drive you to, a, to do crazy things. They have other voices in your head that justifies these actions. And if you talk to them enough, you'll start picking up the craziness. You'll start believing them. You'll start accepting it. You'll start realizing, well, maybe it is me. Well, maybe they're right. Because demons do not, they don't respect. They have no respect. They They have no remorse. They make you do crazy things, and I mean crazy. I have been in events where people, I can't believe I did that. Why did I do that? They're driven by anger. That's the reason why the spirit of anger is so, so pet, like it is to another level. Of When you have someone that's angry, you need to be petrified of them. Get away from them because that demon is ruling with them, and they will latch out and do and say more things. 
and the next day don't remember they said it. Don't remember it. Don't think there's any problem with it at all. My God, my God, Moko Rabashe. The 30th verse, Jesus then asked him, what is your name? Now, you can't ignore what is coming out of you. You can't. You have to know how to monitor your own spirit. What is coming out of you? Why are you so negative? Why are you so foul? Why is your your thinking so stink? Why? Because of what's in you. That bitterness, that ugliness is in you. Why are you having chronic pain and disease and outbreaks and things of that nature? Your soul is sick. The 30th verse, and he said, lesion, for many demons have entered him. Lesion, for we are many. When the demons start talking, oh, it's time to cast it out. See, when Jesus asked his name, now he tried to, he called this demon out and it didn't move. And then he said, what is your name? That means identify yourself. You think, now you're talking to the, the Holy One of Israel, right? You think he didn't know his name and the amount of demons that was there? He made it, he made it bow. He made it confess what it was. Mon- See, there's a power of confession. Demons start talking back. Oh, they're in a real place. They're ready to come out. The 31st verse, and they begged him not to command them to depart into the bottomless pit. Most times some scriptures talk and say he sent it to an abyss, which just basically just means a bottomless pit. They bowed after he asked them their name. Those of you that have the John Eckhart book and you do self-delivered, stop lying to yourself. Call that thing out. You know you're jealous of, uh, of, uh, of the man down the street who's married. You know you're jealous of his car. You know you're jealous of Sarah on the job. Call that thing out. How is the Spirit of the Lord going to flow through you? How is it going to flow through you? How? How is the Spirit of the Lord going to flow through you with all of that in it? So now you got the Holy Spirit, and you want the Holy Spirit to mix with all. No, there will be no demonstration of gifts. If so, it will be twisted. Or tainted. Thirty second verse. Now a large a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let him enter these. So he gave them permission. Demons need permission. You have to give it right. Then the demons came out of the man and entered in the pigs, and the herd rushed down the down into the bank of the lake. And drowned. He put his he put it in his right mind. When demons come out of you, do you know? I can remember seasons of my life when I first got saved. It was as if my mind was opening up. Do you know? I later now go back and chart that stuff, and I realized that was just levels of healing. There were times. I didn't know simple things, things you would think, okay, well, what is her problem? But when you're bound by trauma, hurt, abuse, demonic spirits love this stuff, and they paralyze you. They make you can't make decisions. They make you make wrong decisions. Have you ever said to yourself, I don't know what I was thinking. Why did I do that? Have you ever dated somebody and then look back and go, what was I thinking? You weren't thinking. That demonic spirit was leading you. But the more healing and the more revelation comes. See, there are some of you all go into relationships for wrong reasons. It's because your soul is screaming for sex. 
is because your soul is screaming to get back at a last ex or your soul is screaming, I may never get married again. This is, uh, this is my only chance. Or your soul is screaming because, you know, you got your own plan going on. Little to know that that person is going to wake up or you're going to wake up out of your delusion, which is another whole spirit within itself. When the herdsmen saw what what had happened, they fled and told in the city and the country. The healing was so obvious it could not be denied. There are times I know that I don't know how I got delivered. I don't know how I got healed. This is why I love Jesus so much. This is what makes me sometimes just, oh, my God, I could just sit in a chair and just hug him and just say, Lord, why do you love me so much? Because I can remember times that it was obvious deliverances. My whole continence changed. My mind changed. I made catastrophic decisions that changed my entire life and put my life in a new place. Do you know why? There were no tormenting demons there that make you so indecisive. Have you ever met a person that's just so indecisive? They're indecisive with everything. And I'm, I'm not talking about your preferences of food or preferences of where you live, but indecisive. Like they can't make a normal decision unless taking 30, 40 minutes or even sometimes days or months because they're so indecisive. My, 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 my. That's borderline fear. And I'm not saying that you don't want to be, um, how should I say, uh, won't behave in your in, in how you make decisions and you don't want to move so swiftly, absolutely, I applaud you. But this is someone that's indecisive about small things, period. They, they, they got to go in their head for every inch of a thing because the spirit of fear reached them so much. My God, but this in the 31st, 4th verse, the healing was so obvious they could not deny it. So the man is walking around with no clothes, sleeping in the graveyard, throwing himself down and everything. Totally crazy. Making decisions outside of God. Maybe you're not throwing yourself down. But maybe you get so crazy in your words till you're reckless with your mouth. Your mind is like a freeway constant mind battle. You need to know when you need to go go get some deliverance. You need to go find somebody and say, help me get delivered. My mind is not well. This man was a lunatic. He was a crazy man. He didn't even realize it. And this man left clothed in his right mind. My God. The 35th uh, verse And the people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and found the man whom whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. He was clothed. He was sitting at the feet of Jesus in his right mind. That's a great recipe. He was at the feet of Jesus. That means he was so grateful. He was so humbled. He wanted to go with Jesus. He later on, you'll find that he went and actually began to back and show himself, and he began to literally go into the word and begin to share his testimony, which is our story. So after you're delivered, you should be clothed in your right mind. You should know then now your dress would change. See, all before you thought it was okay just to show everything. Now you're clothed in your right mind, and all of a sudden now you realize the cleavage is too is too revealing. You realize that some things need to be disclosed for the one. But see, when you're not in your right mind, you want everybody to see everything because you're not in your right mind. 
That's why you think everything needs to be so revealed. But when you sit at the feet of Jesus, there is healing. He was put in his right mind. My God, Luke 11 and 24 has has some interesting uh, nuggets in it about unclean spirits that I would love to share with you. Do you understand that when a person literally um, decides to give their life to Jesus and get born again, they actually start to get rid of evil spirits? Yes, they can't even do that on their own. God has to draw you. Luke 11 and 24, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, what about when he's gone out? He comes to himself. The evil spirits literally have the, have evicted now. See, after a while, you homeless. You homeless out of God. You're doing anything, everything. You don't even understand. You, you, come on, think about it. Let's go back down memory lane. Only for a moment. One moment. Think about some of the things you did. You, you, you probably asking yourself, what is going on? I, there are times I grab my head and I'm going, Lord, where was I? I, I, I don't. I, I think to myself, what was I thinking? What was I seeing? How could I have seen this? It just don't make no sense. It don't even make sense to me. He walked through dry places seeking rest. When an unclean spirit cannot find a place of rest, they return to the person in whom they were evicted out of. That's the reason why you got to know to always have a check. Okay, go ahead on and keep ignoring. Just keep ignoring all them family demons. Keep ignoring the ones that's still walking in your children. Just remember where they came from. They came from you. So you better make sure you stay strapped and solid so that your children can now take on the newness in you. And if you walk right before God, God is obligated to hear your cry, and he will hear your cry about your children. You never give up on your children. God knows you didn't know any better, but you know better now. Now you know to walk. Now you know not to walk in love. Now you know what to do. And now let your children see the new you the new life. And some of you all, let me give you a key, those of you. I'm, I'm, I'm in the midst of, of, of completing a book, and, and yesterday I was, I was writing on the, prote- the protection of an abused woman's children. And let me say, give these mothers a word of the Lord. Be mindful. If you put men before your children, you will definitely suffer, and you it will hurt you later. You will grieve later. You'll grieve with your grandchildren. You'll grieve because that demon spirit, where you put that man or before that child, you will suffer. I am so sensitive, and, you know, Jesus is very sensitive to children. If you read the scriptures about children and how he feels about them, you'll understand. And, and and let me say this to you, those of you that are married, that's two different loves, two different loves. The love of a child, the child you gave birth to, and the love of the husband, that's two different loves. And if you got a husband that's jealous of your children, he's sick and need help because that's two different loves. But see, when you marry imbalanced people or unwholesome people, they don't understand that. They get to get jealous of a love of a child is a sign that a man is hurting or, or or either a vice versa or the woman is hurting. And you need to pause a bit before you marry that unhealed woman and you need to go get her some help before then she starts fighting you with your children, which does not make sense because you can't fight a love of a child. How can you do such a thing? You need to read the scriptures on on how much Jesus loved a child. And he says, be careful. Yes, do you know one of the other the unforgivable sins, too, is the harm for children? Go read it. Cruelty to children. That's the word of the Lord for someone. That's the word of the Lord. You need to take that. 
Your soul is sick. Go get healed. You jealous of children because your soul is sick. You need help. And if you don't get the help, it's going to go really left. Look at this man. This man went off the deep end. He was throwing himself down. He was doing crazy stuff. That's not love. Love is not crazy. Stalking people, doing crazy stuff. That's mentally challenged is what that is. And you need help. Mando rabashi. So when that unclean spirit can't find the place, he returns to the person he came in. You better know that demons come back to check. Okay, I, I don't care if you say sanctified, feel with the Holy Spirit, shout up and down, got a deep revelation, got an open heaven. I don't care. I, I don't care. You better monitor your own spirit because that thing comes to check. And guess what? It loves um, men and women of God that are seasoned. In love, you know why? Because they get that Leviathan spirit, that spirit of pride. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Girl, I fast three or four days a week. I'm good. Challenging other people. Okay, you good. All right. Just remember Lucifer got kicked out of heaven because of his pride. Let's see what's going to happen to you. Kill that pride. God, God can't do nothing with a person that's prideful because you already think you're good. You don't need any help. We all need help. Even on your best day, you need help. Seeking rest, finding none, he said, and I will return to my my house. (laughs) Listen to that. I'm going to return to my house once I came out. When the unclean spirit finds that a person is still living for God, oh, no. He can't live there anymore. See, when you make a full decision that this house is going to serve God, Baby, you start the bull. You just open the gate for the bulldozer to come in and clean the ground, scrape the ground. You know when they peel the ground, getting ready to 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 sow seeds and 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 uh, and grow things. They peel the ground. They they take they take this rake thing and they rake everything out of it. They rake all the weeds. You need a rake in today. Father, deliver your people. Deliver them, God. Deliver them in the name of Jesus. And let me say this to you. Everybody need deliverance. Please listen to me. Constantly get your soul healed. I constantly walk through self-deliverance. I constantly search myself. Because the more delivered I get, the more God can use me, the more sensitive I become, the more my ears are open, the more I can see me. And then guess what? The more my children are going to be healed, the more my family is going to be healed. Yes. My God. The 25th verse, Luke 11, 20 and 25. When he come, he find it, it sweet and garnished. The unclean spirit then returns to the whole to the world for reinforcement, wherein he finds evil spirit worse than him. So that means when he come back to check and he realize you just slightly got a little masturbation going on, you slightly got a little time, you just entertain your lust dreams. Just every so often you drag Sarah Sue. But every so often you just kind of remember the old times and you decide to just have a day of dwelling in the old times. Yeah, baby. He finds out that it's swept clean and the word has not been replaced. See, because when you, you, when, when you get delivered, baby, you got the power of that word. You think you're going to leave that service? Right after you leave that door, that demon will try to get to you. But that's why you got to leave with the word. When you are experiencing deliverance, you 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 rejoice, you give God thanks, but you get to that word. You get to that word, you quote that word on the inside of you and have word playing in your ear because he's coming back. And he says, okay. So she got a little word in her, okay. Oh, I'm going to get seven more of my buddies so I can hold myself. 26 verse, then goes he and take it to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Now, let me say this, if you think about this. So now there's eight. Okay, so lesion is groups, multiple, multiple groups. 
But those of you that just don't believe in demon spirits and believe that once you got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, you free and clear and good, even though you're living in this sinful world, I want you to read Luke 27, Luke 11 and 26. Then go as he and said, and come with seven other spirits more wicked than himself. So now we got eight of them in there, and they having a party. Oh, yeah, they having a party. They having a party because you gave it legal right. They return to the person and take up residence. And then that person looks worse than they've ever looked. That's the reason why the spirit of pride is so is so treacherous. Because the enemy make you get so prideful to beeline you to become like that lunatic man. Because when a person gets prideful, they can't see. And they look just as jacked up and crazy. And everybody know it. Well, God knows my heart. Yeah, he knows your heart, but you jacked up. And a lunatic spirit is there. There's no such thing. I don't know what happened to me. Man, I don't know what happened. I don't know why I did that. You know what? I just blanked out for a moment. You didn't just blank out. That's in your heart. That's in your spirit. What is in your What's housed in there? Okay, I know you, you pray in tongues. Yeah, that's your spirit. What's in your soul? That's your soul talking. That's your soul getting crazy. My God. I, let me say this. I want you to let this be known because I, I, don't, I don't want people to think I got strange or false doctrine. I want you to listen to this. Let it be known that no demon spirit can enter you unless you let that thing in, unless you invite it in. You got to open a door. No, no man can come in your house. Mm-mm. He can't come in your house unless he got a key. Did you give him a key? What key did you give him? What key did you open up to the enemy's ground? James 4 and 7, submit thyself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. What door did you open? No demon spirits can just come in. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, sometimes people downplay <clears throat> because they see that soul raging. So they think, well, I don't understand. He filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, why is he doing all of that? Because his soul is sick and he just didn't get delivered. Yeah, he don't understand that deliverance is the children's bread in Ezekiel 17. He doesn't know that scripture. He doesn't understand that. So in his mind, he's got, he's got this thing open. So he's opening doors that he has no clue to. No clue. Evil spirits are constantly in the world, and they're always, they're always seeking a place to reside. Now, you need to know that. This is the reason why transferring the spirit is so powerful. Yeah, you need to watch who you talk to. I, I don't talk to everybody uh, all the time. Yeah, I, I know how to do what I need to get in, do what I need to do, discern, tell that thing where it needs to go, send it on its way. See, some of you all need to discern who you're talking to because some of the things they're talking is going in you. Then what? Now what you going to do? First Peter 5 and 8. For the adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he can devour. He's always trying to come back. Always. Although an evil spirit is always present, all we have to do is barricade your spirit. That means put that, release that Holy Spirit to put a hedge of protection around you and put a, a angel of the Lord at the doorway of any entry. What, are, what is the entryway? Like, Providence, how, does these, how, do, how do I let these things in? What you see? What are you doing watching lust movies? You know where you come from. You know what you've been delivered from, but you think you're strong enough. You going to watch people on the TV having sex? And sometimes these movies can fool you. Because sometimes you be thinking they hallmark and you're thinking they're, they're good and they're, they're wonderful, and next thing you know, they throw something in there. But you got to know how to click that thing off. I'm telling you, you got to cover your entryway. So uh, uh, your eye gates is an entryway. What you speak, how it comes in you. The Bible says it's what, the, what comes out of a man that defiled, but how it got in there. It's an entryway. 
Your body is an entryway. Who you have sex with, yes, absolutely. You have to guard your heart. You have to put a guard over your heart. Yeah, somebody stick a knife in there, you better go to Jesus and get that knife out because if you don't, that wound will turn black. It will make that heart turn black. Now, you have to understand you got to protect that and you got to continue to walk in righteousness. Have a desire for it. I know you might say, Prophet, is some of these people take you to a place. I understand. Lord knows I understand. But monitor your heart because you let that thing get inside of that baby and that heart will get sick. Keep living under constant bondage. That heart will get sick. It'll get sick through wrong foods. It'll get sick because of pain, because of grief. Grieve. Just grieve so much that you grieve yourself. Constantly stay under word curses. Keep on and watch your soul get sick. Just watch. It will. Some of these sicknesses is not just age or any of that. That's a lie. Some of this stuff is straight up demonic stuff because you're wounded and it hurts and you're too prideful to tell people, I hurt. Please come help me. I hurt. So guess what? Lesion stay in there. And then he brings some more. And then he already got a foothold in certain areas because now that you're constantly wounded so much, you got all kind of other bondages showing up in other areas. Because you like discipline, so now you got to begin to, and then and then you're trying to figure out why my finances is messed up. Why don't I have overflowing? Why am I overflowing with joy and happiness? Why don't God just bless? What 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 is it, Prophet? Why am I always weighted down? Just soul sick, baby. Let's work on your soul. We work on the soul because then the soul is where Legion lives. Yes, yes, he does. He lives there. Just remember First Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant. Just, just, just remember that. Let me just give you some checklists for lesion, and I think it will help you. Um, if none of this applies to you, again, God bless. Awesome, awesome. I live and I aspire to be just like you. But every so often I go through this check because you know why? You live in a sinful world. That thing will never stop. It's always trying to get you. That's the life we live. But remember, we have power in God. In, that's why the Bible says we should sit in heavenly places. Because see, in heavenly places, see, in a secret place, oh, my God, there's such freedom. God takes delight in you. Do you know, though, he said he'll give you the desires of your heart if you delight yourself in him. That's where your freedom is. Where does, where does all this negative come from when you don't delight yourself? Lesion is a strong spirit. It's stubborn. It's strong. It makes you fight leadership. It makes you fight the people that are supposed to help you. It makes you run away. I've seen people with demonic spirits in them that will not go get help. They, they don't want to deal with that childhood stuff. They lose their husbands. People just, they leave them because they just, it's just, they can't deal with it. Wives just pick up and gone. And I'm like, what happened? What, what happened? Find out. Oh, my God, so much stuff was going on. And the wife, what they doing? They hiding. They hide behind the wife or they hide behind the husband. They hide by the name marriage. They hide behind their degree. But God wants you free today. You have the right to be free. You are filled with God. And all you have to do, we're going to bring some things to the courts of heaven before we finish today. I'm telling you, this message is going to change your world. Get ready for change. See, when you start going after those spirits, baby, you will find such freedom. There are days I take a day of repentance. You might say, well, Papa, you don't repent as you go? I sure do. And you still take a day? Yes, in case I forget some stuff. Yes. I also have days days of forgiving. Mm-hmm. I have days that I just go through a check. I make a list. I make myself sit there till I find a list 
just to make sure. And that's what I do all day long. They say, what you doing? Oh, walking through, walking through forgiveness. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Yes, Miss Pride. Yes, Mr. Pride. Again, again. Yes. Now, Legion is a group of demons. There are demons that group together. Most time, if you got bitterness, you're going to have some shame. You're going to have some guilt. You're going to have some anger. They group together. They work together. Now, they can't stand each other, mind you that, but they'll work together. They're grouped. Plenty of them. That's the reason why you say, well, prophet, I don't understand. You know, I just, you know, I just repented. I did this. I did this. I don't, I, I was good. I know I went through a deliverance service. I know I left there free. How did it come back? Why am I battling it three days later? Oop, there it is. How did it get there? Because they work together. Yeah, they work together. So you don't see, but demons work on our unintelligence and lack of the word and lack of knowledge of the word. Oh, I don't need to study on all of that. I don't want to study on no demons. Okay, so they're going to be activated in you, and you can't recognize them. And that's the reason why you're going to be alone. Because, the, the, see, the demoniac man, nobody wanted to be around him. He was doing crazy stuff. And that's what happens when demons flow out of you. You become alone, and you, you, you get filtrated with these demons. They flow out of you, and people don't like you. And they and they don't understand. They don't understand because you 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 can't see it, and they're trying to figure out why. Let me say this: demon will try to control your decision. Have you ever think of some of your decisions? You trying to ask yourself, what in the world was I thinking? You weren't thinking. Demon, the lesion will try to literally determine your decision. You know why? Because it gives you that lunatic mind. And at the time, you're trying to figure out, I had to be crazy. Yeah, that's about it. It will also try to control your direction, try to lead you wrong, because other voices get in your head. You thought, I, I can remember one woman, I'm like, wait, you're going to live where? Why are you? I'm like, wait, you, you have a, a, a beautiful apartment. You just settled in it. You have favor on the job. What are you doing? Oh, I just feel this. I said, I said, okay, I'm going to give you some wisdom of one of my mentors. She would always tell me, okay, think, think again, and think again. And see, at that time when she used to say that, I, I didn't know what that meant. She talking perils was a lot. My God, who rasha. All I could think about is, Lord Jesus, how many times she said that she was trying to tell me, you all think again. It will also draw you to like kind. Lesion has multiple spirits. You will find yourself every time. Why is it that that woman keep going to that same kind of man? Lesion. Why do you keep keep drawn to abusive people? Why do you keep being drawn to crazy people? Why are you drawn to mental people? What is the problem? What is in you? Who's the common denominator? It will draw you to those type people. You'll be thinking, what? And then when you change and then you go through that true transformation and then begin to walk in the God power, oh, my God, it's another level. And and your head will be trying to understand your path to the point you won't re- you will be beyond recognition. Monde or beyond recognition. Have you ever had a check from the past? And people have to keep going come and look and say, That's you? They're looking like, Wow, whoa, that's you? Like my goodness, what happened to you? Transformation. And I fell in love with Jesus. Reoccurring health issues, constant. Lesion is a demonic spirit that will ignite strange things in the body. Have you ever went to the doctor that they can't diagnose you? They can't figure out what it is? I had a client, and she said, can you please come to the, to the doctor with me? I'm like, wait, I'm a light coach. 
I don't really go to the doctor. She said, no, you need to hear this. She says, because I don't understand this. She said, there is more. She says, I'm a healthy person. I have always been. I said, yeah, you keep me on target. What is this? And she said, just please tell me what you hear. I, I talked to the Lord about it. He said, go with it. I'm like, okay. And I'm listening to the man, and I'm like, oh, my God. I said, baby, he's describing your heart. I said, your heart is wreathed with pain. Look at the dates that it started. Look at the dates those things happened to you. Look at the dates. We track the dates down. Do you understand? My God. I don't even know how to read medical records and things of that nature. I call them the fatality and say, look, they said this. What do you think this is? Tell me what that means. I don't even understand. I'm listening to this man. The whole time I'm listening to them, I'm like, oh, my God. And he kept loudly saying certain dates and years, and I'm looking at her. She's like, what, what? I said, do you remember that year? Do you know what happened in that year? She says, oh, my God. She said, but I repented. I forgave him. I said, but look at the year. I say, it's time to go to work. It's time to go to work. It will make you say crazy things. Lesion will make your mouth like a snake coming out of it and then make you so embarrassed you don't know what to do. Who is the spirit called lesion? All demons lie. Okay, you say, well, you know, everybody got a little spirit in it. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, every one of them lie. The truth is not in them, nothing about them. You got something flowing out of you, something coming out of you that's wrong. Go ahead on talking about, you know, I'm going, well, I told him I was sorry. What is the deal you keep saying sorry over and over for the same thing? And then some of them are so pride, so they won't say sorry. I know some women, like, they'll give you a gift before you say sorry. And I'll just look and say, okay, is this the way you say sorry? I think you know that's prideful, right? And some of them won't say it at all. But you know what's interesting? That there are books in heaven that every one of our actions is recorded. Did you know that? That's the reason why we have the courts of heaven. That's why there's a scripture that talks about blotting out our transgressions, blotting out our iniquities. It can be blotted out. How is it blotted out with the blood of Jesus? Uh-huh. And going before the courts of heaven and asking the Lord to be let it be recorded and bringing back to true repentance and going back and doing good deeds. Do you know every good deed you do is recorded? Everyone, even the ones that the pastor don't see. It's recorded in heaven. It is. My God, who is this spirit called lesion? Lesion bounds you. You ever seen anybody's bound? Their mind is bound. They can't listen. They hear things opposite. They always think somebody's going to take something from them. They bound. Go ahead on and take it. God going to make you give it back? Oh, he got triple more. Go on. Okay, and I'm not saying that don't mean you be a doormat and let anybody. No, of course not. Because any of those people that have that reoccurrence thing, you should be the X them out anyway. You, you put them on the prayer list. And you back off of them because they got something moving in them. And if you let it continue, it's going to move on you. Legion bounds you. But Jesus is in your spirit, man. And you make your spirit, man, stronger than your soul. Go after that soul. Go get that stuff out of there. That's all in mistakes. That's all in wrong decisions. That's all in all that other stuff in there, all of that old stuff, before, the, you know, before Christ stuff is in there. You got to get it out of there. That's the reason why when you come to Christ, you become a new creature. That's why you be, you know, old sins are passed away. It's just them habits are in there. Yeah, you, you know, you come off of drugs. Now you got to learn how to live free. You got to learn how to not stand on the corner. Don't buy, don't take medicine. You got to learn to live off Jesus. You got to learn to live free. When you are born again, you free. That whole new mind comes. Lesion is in your soul. You want to know where it is? It's not in your spirit. No, Jesus is in there. So let's, let's make that clear. Lesion is a lunatic and make people be crazy, make them do things that are insane, make people start talking to themselves. 
It's connected to Leviathan. Because see, when a person's got the spirit of lesion flowing out of them, they can't see it. They're so prideful. Leviathan comes to steal your prayer life. See, whenever you get to the point you can't pray, I've had people to call me, prophetess, please pray for me. I can't, I can't pray. I'm trying to pray. Nothing won't come out. Please help me. Please help me. I can't. It won't come out. Okay? That's Leviathan. There's times I've had people to tell me, it, I want to say it, but it, it won't come out. I can't pray. Leviathan, pride, that means go after the pride. Pull it down, bound your, repent. Say sorry. Say you don't know. It's okay to not know. You don't have to know everything. That's the reason why they got people you can hire for the things you don't know. You don't have to be ace at everything. I don't want to be ace at everything. I only want to be, an, I want to be ace at whatever God is anointing me for because that's where the flow will be. That's where my joy, that's where my happiness is. That's why whenever I put a team together, I will tell people, stay in your lane, get out. No, I don't care if you think her thing looks better than yours or his thing looks, what are you doing? Stay in your lane. Do what you do best and flow. The glory going to be, the anointing will be on it. When you have a spirit of lesion, I'm telling you, there will be a craziness to food. Certain foods will set you off, chronic health issues. Rashes, strange things appearing on your body at times. Yes. Remember now, the, 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 the man in the scripture was homeless and naked and didn't know it. There's things you don't know. Okay, you might say, well, prophet, this is just a little extreme for me. Just, just take this wisdom. Remember the man in the scripture. He did not know he was this way. So by chance, can you just become accountable to somebody? Just by chance, just in case some of it just might be in you. Just in case. Let's do a soul check. Now it's time to go before the Lord. It's time to do a soul check. Mm -hmm. Yes, understand there are many layers. Some of you all, you're so, you're so prideful. Well, I prayed for that. I prayed against that. I'm done with that. Well, why you still got an attitude? Why your attitude bad? Well, let's go into some of these agreements and soul ties. Maybe your attitude needs to be healed. You do know that there are soul ties that don't involve sex. Sure, First Samuel 18, Jonathan and David, they loved each other so much they had a bond. Do you know when a soul tie, tie is removed? Do you know, you ever had friends that's friends forever and God break that soul tie and it, they don't see each other, and it's like the bond has been broken. Like all of a sudden, you'd be, you'd be friends with somebody for like 10, 15 years, and then all of a sudden, there's a big break, and all of a sudden, I've had that done. This is how I used to describe it. It was like a big chocolate cake, and it was like somebody took a, 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 a slice of the cake out so quietly, I never knew it was gone. I remember one time the Lord did that with a woman that I was I was close to, and I remember when and I remember a prophet telling me he said it's the Lord's going to take somebody out of your life, and of course I kind of look a little strange. He said not death. He said not death. He said but the Lord's going to take somebody out of your life. He said because this person is not made to go in your next season. He said because there's some things in that person he doesn't want in you, and I was like confused as ever. It was not longer than a month later, my life went through such a transformation, and I went on such a, such a different path. Literally, I forgot the woman's number, and this woman that I was so close. And I remember about, it was like a month later, someone called, I think it was one of the pastors, and said, can you give me her number? And I was like, oh, my God. It was out of my head. I had to go to the office. I had to put the phone on hold and say, can you give me her number? And they all looked at me like, what? I didn't remember the number. It was that much of a separation. See, when the Holy Spirit takes people out of your life, you better let it happen. People are there for seasons. Now, I mind you, there are some people you don't let get out of your life. Some people are made for life. They're made for life. Some people are made for you to walk with, but there's some people are only trying, they're carriers, they're carriers for a season. 
And then if they do not begin to walk together, two can't walk together unless they agree. You've got to agree. But when it gets to the point that God's ready to transition you to a new plateau and they're not ready to go, they got to transition out. My God, that was a revelation for somebody. Deal with your bad habits. Monitor your constant outbursts. That's a sign you got something in you that's not right. Stop the excuses and the pridefulness, putting it on other people. What are you talking about? Who has the power to shift your life? You made those decisions. Deal with them. Bring them before the courts, and let's watch God heal them. Jesus knows where you are. Let me just say this. I know this was a message that, you know, you had to put a lot of checks there, but God knows where you are. But that's not an excuse. It's like that grace message. Oh, I said, go on. You you keep on with that grace message, you're going to end up in hell. Because there's no other, the scripture is holiness. There is no other way to enter see him other than, oh, you got to work towards that. You can keep talking about this grace coming in alignment with all kind of demon spirits, talking about God going to give me grace. Okay? Jesus knows where you are today. But today you breaking free. You breaking free. There's vicious cycles in your life, same cycles. Somebody constantly taking a knife and plunging your heart. It's time to bring that before the courts, babe, because a decision needs to be made, or you're going to make a decision with your health. Battling constant mind issues all of the time. Your mind is racing. There's something in there. Yeah, there's, there's something in there. You got to get it out. And you need to be accountable. Repetitive issues in your health or signs of is signs that your soul is sick. And I'm not saying that you don't need a health check. I'm not saying that you're not aging. I'm not saying that. But you know there's current strange things that the doctors can't figure it out. So let's just do a prayer of rededication. Why don't you just repeat after me, Father, in the name of Jesus. I repent of my sins, for I have sinned against thee, and I have sinned against your word. And I pray and I ask for your mercy and your forgiveness. Father, I come in the name of Jesus. God, let it be recorded in the courts of heaven that, Father, I have repented of my sin, and I ask your blood covering over it. Jesus, I lift my sins before you, and I ask for total forgiveness. I forgive those who have sinned against me. I release them today. I release them out of my heart and my mind, God. Father, wash me in your precious blood. And, Father, I call for the resurrected power into my mind and my heart and my soul. Father, heal every wound. Father, baptize me in your Holy Spirit and the power, God. And, Father, I thank you. I thank you for healing my soul. And, Father, even now, God, I come to you with total boldness, boldness in your anointing and in your strength, God. Father, as I stand in the courts of heaven today, I ask for forgiveness, Father, of even things that I'm so ashamed of. Lord, because I know you now, and I want to be peer towards you. But, God, I bring them before your courts today. And, Lord, I thank you that you are Father. You are my Savior, and you are my judge. And, Lord, today I bring these confessions before the courts in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I thank you for liberty and freedom. Father, I forgive. I open up my heart. I forgive myself of choices. Decisions, Lord, that I made without you. And, Father, even though I bring my guilt, shame, and every grieving spirit, God, remove it from me, that I might flow in the power of your Holy Ghost, that I might set in heavenly places and walk in freedom. And, Father, today cut out every piece of emotional, uh, that every area in my life that needs healing emotionally, physically, I destroy, I annihilate, I detach myself from every ungodly soul tie. And this day, I stand before the courts. And, Father, I say yes to your will today. 
thank you for forgiving me. I walk free in Jesus' wonderful name, and so shall it be. Today you walk free. Anybody who would like me to give you easily steps to go before the courts of heaven, just email me, and I will send it back to you. I'm going to leave you with this scripture, and I want you to remember this. It's Joel 2 and 25. I will restore unto you the years that the, <laughs> that the locust has eaten and the hopper and the destroyer and the cutter and, the, and my great army, which I have sent among you. I will restore unto you the years that was stolen. I want you to remember that. Joel 2 and 25. That's the English Standard Version. Thank you so much for being on the call today.